now. Right now? Okay. Yeah. 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 So here's a documentary on the life of Marco Polo. Thank you, Bella. <laughs> 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 For thousands of years, trading routes had developed. We call it the Silk Road, two continents wide. But when Romans ruled Europe... I'm trying, man. Sorry, guys. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll, I'll do it without the mic, that's fine. Alright, no, we want it on. Get it, Jeffrey. Uh, yeah. Alright, that's alright, don't worry about it. What about the Romans? My favorite fucking Roman. So, 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 go, Jeffrey! So, last we heard, there was this trade route called the Silk Road. Yeah! We now bring you back to your program. Yeah, sixth grade history! Woo! For thousands of years, trading routes had developed. We call it the Silk Road, two continents wide. But when Romans ruled Europe and Mongols ruled China, neither one still knew much of the opposite side. Marco Polo was born in the city of Venice in 1254, a rich merchant man's son. Yeah. When Marco was little, his father and uncle went trading much further than most men had done. The brothers came home after nine years of travels. They told Marco the wonderful places they'd gone. They planned to go back to trade more goods and knowledge with their new friend, the Mongols' Emperor Kublai Khan. So Marco went with them back east on their mission. When the journey began, he was just 17. Through Persia, past mountains, and the vast Gobi Desert, he saw things that few Europeans had seen. And when three years had passed, they had made it to China, and they gave Kublai Khan a few presents they had brought. And the Khan was impressed with this young man named Marco, and the Polos were treated like lords in the court. But Marco was shocked that they used paper for money, and he was shocked at coal, which he thought was a rock that could burn. <laughs> The Khan's postal service was another one of his wonders that Marco would tell Europe about on his return. <laughs> but for 17 years through the empire, Marco had many jobs that came straight from the emperor himself. And when the Khan grew quite old, the Polos got worried that the next Khan might not let them leave with their wealth. Finally, they got permission for leaving. It was a hard journey home, both by land and by sail. Home in Venice, Marco soon joined a war against Genoa, but he got captured and then spent a year in jail. In jail, Marco met Rusticello, a writer. He heard Marco's stories and he wrote them all down. That book became famous and read across Europe, even just with hand copies to get it around. Yeah! Look at that beer! Although they loved it, few people believed it. Some called it the millions for one million lives. It is likely that Rusticello or others inserted or altered some stories inside. All true or not, all the book's great descriptions stirred Europe to wonder and want to learn more. All true or not, often much later travelers found proof of the things Marco said before. All true or not, an inspired Columbus and many others who journeyed for knowledge. Marco himself never left home again, but till the end he still swore that he'd seen more than he told. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> no, no.